Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. We have a monthly feature here on Chef AJ Live where we feature Thomas Allen from California Balsamic Vinegar making recipes with a particular flavor of vinegar that he announces the month before with a contest with your recipes. And if he chooses them and makes them on the air, you get two free bottles in the flavor of your choice. And this month's flavor is the absolutely delicious white peach balsamic vinegar. And he's gonna be making a peach melba trifle, a peach granola, a peach yogurt, which when you combine them, you have a peach parfait, which by the way means perfect in French, and some peach dreamsicles. That sounds like an amazing lineup of recipes. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you, Chef. Uh, Tommy Balsamic is back in the house. So that's very exciting to be here. And today we've got all sorts of uh, special guests uh, here today. And we're going to have the whole gang come up here. I want to introduce our film crew today. So come on down, everybody. We're going to uh, have uh, everybody here. So what we have, as everybody knows, my darling bride, Ethel, you know, but Ethel's grandniece, Desiree, is here, and young master Patrick is our manager at the warehouse, who's going to be our tech support uh, this afternoon, so I want to introduce the whole gang here today, so thank Perfect. you for having us all. Nice to meet you all. Right, you so, always say Ethel's your bride. Did you just get married? Our darling bride, we've been together now uh, 11 years, but she will always be my darling bride. That's just the way it is. That's fantastic. So, so um, now, uh, Chef, I'm thrilled to be able to see and chat with you for a little bit. I know that uh, you've been out and about. And you've missed Indio and only 120 degrees while you were gone. Oh, so, darn. And I was all the way, it was down to 80 in Mexico. I thought it was going to freeze to death. <laughs> oh, glad to have you back. So, all is well. And uh, so what we are doing here, and, and for all of you out there who remember uh, Let's Make a Deal and Monty Hall, we have Carol Merrill here. Uh, that if that's the name of the assistant who was on that show for years, I just always got a, such a big kick out of seeing that. And for all of you who are mm, 55 and above, you might remember that name. So our friendly little Carol Merrill is here to be our assistant for the day. But Desiree is going to rock because she's actually helped uh, make these, uh, these dishes here over the, over the last night and the day before when we were making these. We've made most of these uh, a couple of times, you know, for all of them, because sometimes one of the recipes I'll ch chat with you about, oh, it didn't work at all. And then we had to uh, go back to one of the original uh, ingredients. So, but we wanted to try it. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. And because it's peach season, our tree right behind, uh, right in front of me, about 30 feet in front of me, right outside the back door, is an uh, angel peach tree with absolutely delicious white peaches. And these are some of the, the peaches right off of our tree. And they, unfortunately, they all ripened at the same time. There were probably 200 peaches on the tree and they've all ripened in the last uh, 10, 10, 14 days. So we've been eating peaches as fast as possible, but that's why we wanted to do uh, peach balsamic for the month of July, because we knew the, the uh, peaches would be ripe. So we're gonna start off with our uh, peach smoothie and dream peach dream sickles. So now in a Vitamix or a blender, you put one and a half to three cups of frozen peaches, uh, one tablespoon of our California balsamic peach balsamic, a tablespoon of vanilla, uh, two cups of plant-based milk, and uh, this is a recipe from Rita, our, one of our oldest friends. Uh, she likes to use the Joy almond milk. And then a tablespoon of Joy almond base, uh, three frozen bananas, and you can, uh, if you're serving it in a glass, you can serve it with a wedge of frozen peach or a fresh peach right in the edge of the glass. And this recipe also makes delicious frozen uh, treats to pour into a freezer pot. And Chef, I have to thank you for sending us a wonderful gift last month of our, uh, our frozen, and here they are up there. And this is our little container that you sent us. Thank you so much uh, for this. We said, oh, we have to use this immediately. 
immediately. And it has, it works out fantastic. That's our, uh, our little peach uh, dream sickle here. And that's worked out fabulous because Desiree here said, make me another batch because I'll eat those all day long. So uh, that's for you to enjoy for the rest of the show out there. Enjoy, enjoy. So that's our simple, really easy popsicle uh, recipe that you can use with our fresh peaches. And um, one down, three to go. Now our next uh, recipe is from our friend Nikki Demirs. So thank you, Nikki, for the white balsamic peach pie granola. And this stuff is fabulous. Ethel made this a week ago and we munched on it for much of the week with our yogurt and absolutely loved it. Now, um, starts off for a small batch is what this is baking right now. One cup of old fashioned oats, a quarter cup of chopped pecans, a tablespoon of chia seeds, a teaspoon of cinnamon. We always recommend Saigon cinnamon from our friends at California Balsamic. A uh, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter cup of diced dried peaches, and uh, I imagine you can use pretty much any dried fruit. Uh, uh, you know, apricots would be good, uh, dried cherries would be fantastic, but since we're in peach season, we're going to use some dried peaches. A uh, teaspoon of vanilla, and one quarter to one half cup of date syrup, or you can use the blue agave syrup, your choice. And then a tablespoon of our peach balsamic. Now you simply mix all the wet ingredients in uh, and add the, you simply take the wet ingredients and add them to your bowl of dried ingredients. Um, you spread the mixture on a sheet pan and bake it at 325 for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, the first batch we made, we smoothed it out on the pan and put it in for 15, 17 minutes, and it became a little crunchy. Um, so the second batch we made, we just let them crumble in on the pan and only cooked them for the 12 or 13 minutes, and those was a much chewier batch. So depends on your taste. If you like a crunchy granola, do it 15 to 17 minutes a nice chewy one, then about 12 or 13 minutes, but it worked out fabulous. And if you'll take that to the camera and show chef, this is what the uh, the granola looked like. Oh, there you go. Just right. Oh, wow. It looks, see that, chef? it looks amazing. It is an absolute fabulous granola, granola batch out there. I think it is, right? All is good. And don't forget to finish you that out there. If that's if there's any left, you're in big trouble. That better be gone in two minutes. <laughs> okay, so that's the granola. Now we made the granola first, so we could talk about the uh, the uh, yogurt for the third one. And the third one uh, is from our friend Amy Bernard. So thank you, Amy. You'll be getting two wonderful uh, bottles, eight ounce bottles of your choice. So we'll be sending you an email and thank you very much for your um, recipe. Now, Amy starts off with a box of soy milk and she likes to use the Trader Joe's brand. She pours that into a bowl, sprinkle four probiotic capsules into the milk and stir them up. Now, pour the mixture into a glass jar with no lids and wrap a towel around each, bowl, uh, each jar. Now you turn the oven on to 200 degrees for five minutes and then turn it off and put the jars into the oven overnight. Now, the first time we did this, um, now in the morning, uh, you can taste for the tang level and leave it in there longer for uh, more tangy results. This is what the jars uh, that we used. And the first time we did it, it didn't actually set the first time we made it, you know, and this is our first time ever. So we may have done something a little bit wrong. So Ethel simply turned the oven back on and wrapped them up again, threw them back in there and did it again overnight the next day. And they came out fabulous the next morning, but it was quite tangy because they've been in there literally for two days. And uh, that worked out very, very nicely. Now we made it again with um, almond milk. Almond milk. Don't try almond milk. It did not work at all. Absolutely no uh, thickening at all 
the further yogurt with almond milk. So recommend the soy. Now, not everybody can use soy, but you can experiment with maybe an oat milk or what other milk might work with that chef? Um, let me think. What are, I mean, some people use rice milk, almond milk, but there is right. There always seems to be uh, yogurts, always seems to be as coconut milk. Coconut milk for sure would oh, work. That's a wonderful idea. I think that'd be fabulous flavor with coconut milk as well. So wonderful. So if anybody does that and it works, please let us know so we can post that on this recipe. When Everything's on our website right now, all the recipes. But we'll make a note later on if somebody uh, tries this with a different milk than what we've done, whether it's the soy or the almond, and it does work, please let us know. And, and then, of course, as the morning finished out there, we just chopped up some, some peaches, blended it in with the, uh, the yogurt, and there it is. Wow. And then, of course, the one thing that we want to do for this is put on some of the, the granola on here, because that, to me, is the real treat to add the, the granola and the, the yogurt on at the same time. It's a fabulous treat out here. The fruit, of course, when it's seasoned, you could use, of course, any kind of fruit you wanted to make with this. But since it's peach season, that's what we've done. And if you need to, always put just an extra little teaspoon of the peach balsamic right over the top. So that's a super easy one. And you, know, you know what's great with the peach balsamic is to make like a bellini and just put it in some club soda. Mm -hmm. oh, we will always enjoy peach balsamic in club soda. About a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half in an eight ounce glass is what we found when I was at Chef AJ's place uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Now it seems like a bazillion years ago since I've seen you in person, Chef. And we made the uh, we did the simply lemon in there. We uh, we all decided that just over a tablespoon in an eight ounce glass was the right proportion to use for balsamic. Um, yeah. But we've never made it with any of the dark balsamic, like apricot, cherry, fig, pomegranate. I know it's going to turn to a kind of a brown, look more like Coca-Cola on there, but it's still going to be uh, processed sugar free and still delicious. Of the dark so, ones, I've only done cherry, but you know, even a little bit of the white balsamic in water, it, it, even in plain water, even if you don't have bubble water, it makes it so, it's so delicious. Always good. And my favorite drink this summer is mixing together the pineapple and the coconut to make a pina colada water. That's just always something that I've thoroughly enjoyed. And my favorite so, is to take the grapefruit and put it in the spinthrift grapefruit and I have like double grapefruit soda. Oh, you are a master chef. That's why you are the queen. Okay. Um, we're going to continue with our cute little story. Um, on my uh, trip around the world for my high school reunion. And we left off in Hong Kong. I popped over to uh, India because in Hong Kong, I bought a ticket to go from India to Kathmandu. And, but when you're going to another country, you have to get a visa back then and probably still now. I had needed to get a visa. And uh, that took about four days waiting for the visa to be um, you know, uh, granted. So I had a few days to kill in New Delhi and everyone said, oh, well, if you're here, you need to get on the train and pop down to Agra to see the Taj Mahal. And I thought, oh, that's fantastic. You know, just go to the train station, get on a, find the train that's going to Agra and there'll be a second class train and a first class train. Well, the second class train was about two and a half dollars for a, a round trip ticket between New Delhi and Agra. And I said, well, how much is a first class ticket? They said $3, 50 cents more to get a first class ticket. I'm gonna live it up, boom, and off I went. I looked at the second class car and it was absolutely jam packed full of people. And I got onto the first class car for 50 cents more and I was the only passenger on that car. And I thought, wow. That's um, that blew me away that nobody was going to spend that extra 50 cents to get on the first class car. And I went there after two hours uh, uh, ride on there. We stopped in a little town. People got on and off. And all of a sudden, somebody was on the same train as I was. And when he saw me in my little uh, section, my little compartment, 
he asked if he could join me. I said, sure, come on in. I've been sitting by myself for the last two hours. And he came in and he introduced himself and he was the chief of police of the city of Agra. And I thought, well, that's an unusual person to, to meet on the train. And when we got to Agra, he said, come on by my place. I want to introduce you to my wife. And I said, let's go. And when we got to his house, his wife was absolutely mortified that her husband had brought home an American tourist unannounced. And then we sat down, had a glass of tea, and I was on my way. But he told me, when I get to uh, Agra and get on the bicycle taxi, it's a good 25 minute bicycle ride from the train station to get to the Taj Mahal. And the easiest, cheapest way to do that is take a little bicycle taxi. I took that there, but he warned me, don't let the driver tell you he's gonna wait for you because he's gonna wait literally most of the day. I was there for five and a half, six hours. And I couldn't get, I couldn't pay him uh, right there. And he said, make sure that you only pay a 75 rupees for the round trip ticket. And by the time I finished my uh, visit at the Taj Mahal, and, and here he is waiting for me, he took me back to the station to, get, to catch my uh, train ride back to the capital. And he said, I want double. I was waiting for you all day. And I said, the chief of police was right. He's going to try and scam me. And so we negotiated for a few minutes. But during those few minutes, all of the other drivers that were at the station surrounded me. Probably 25 uh, men were surrounding me as he and I were trying to negotiate a price, which was very intimidating. And after a little while, we negotiated uh, a right around 200 rupees uh, for the entire trip instead of the 75 that it should have been. He wanted a thousand. So I thought, oh my gosh, what a what a unique experience to take, to take that kind of trip. But at least I was forewarned and uh, got on the trip and went to Nepal and that was that. So. That was a fun experience that I will never forget uh, being at the Taj Mahal because it is an absolutely beautiful place. The city Agra is dirt poor, but the, the Taj Mahal is an extraordinary place. Wow. I wish, okay. you could always, I wish you could always take upgrade to first class for 50 cents. That would be nice. So, all right, and now our last one is from a nice young lady, uh, Maureen Kilgore. Thank you, Maureen, for this. We'll be sending you your two eight ounce bottles. And um, what we have is a peach Melba or a peach uh, Melba trifle. And you can do either way, but the basic recipe is one and a half cups of frozen raspberry, and they will be divided, a tablespoon of plant milk, one half uh, medjool date, two tablespoons of the raspberry flame balsamic, or you can just use the straight raspberry if you like. Now in a blender, combine one cup of the frozen raspberries, a tablespoon of the plant milk, one half a date, two tablespoons of the raspberry balsamic, and you set that aside. Now, uh, the, other, the rest of the recipe is two cups of cooked white fleshed sweet potatoes, two and a half cups of plant milk, eight medjool dates, a quarter cup of our peach balsamic, two cups of fresh peaches, and you'll be dividing those up. Now in a blender, you combine the sweet potatoes, plant milk, dates, quarter cup of the balsamic, one and a half cups of the peaches. When you blend it smooth, add one quarter cup of the peaches, of the fresh peaches to the blender, pulse it for just a second to make those into chunks. Don't get them, uh, you know, keep them nice and, and chunky out there. So just pulse it for just a moment. Now you take the remaining one quarter cup of peaches and cut them into small pieces. And you can drop these pieces of cut peaches into the remaining, with the remaining one half cup of raspberries into the bottom of each of the popsicle uh, cups. So you're putting a little bit in the bottom of the raspberry and the peaches, the fresh ones. And then you put in about two teaspoons of the raspberry mixture uh, on the bottom of each cup. And then you add the peach mixture. There is a remaining a little bit of, if there's a remaining little bit of raspberries, you can add that to the cups and freeze them. 
Now, and here they are right there with the actual cup of the raspberries and the peaches. And last time we did this, oh, that bad boy just jumped right out of my hands and jumped over my shoulder and onto the floor. So thank you for helping me with that. And now what we did with a little extra fruit, this can be made into a trifle by layering the trifle dish or a glass bowl starting at the bottom and a layer of peach mixture, then a layer of raspberries and peaches, then a layer of peach mixture and top it with the raspberry mixture and refrigerate for about four hours. And that's what these bad boys are. We like this um, with uh, just the mixture here with, you can see there, the bottom of the peach and the raspberry peach on top. And then we put, so over there and see if, if you can see that. Um, we put some of the peach pieces um, on top as well with the raspberry puree. So that worked out. Is it, is it thick like a pudding? Yes, it is. You can wiggle it like this. It would, it would pour out in a big blob, but it is pudding texture, absolutely. So you can do that either with those. It was a hit at work. So we took these to work uh, last week when we first made these, and it was a big hit. People just said, I'll eat that all day. So uh, again, there are so many recipes that we're making for people who are not SOS free, who are thoroughly enjoying these because it's just plain old good quality food. And that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. So that's what we like. Oh, Bouliant, who was just on the show, says, thank you for the two bottles of vinegar you sent. Any guests on the show, the first time they come on gets two free bottles, but not every time they come on, because then we'd be out of business. We're always happy to hear that. I got an email from one of the, what was it? Who said it was, that was Nikki? Um, that you just spoke about, Chef? Uh, Nikki Jaswal, who was on? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I saw an email, to, I thought today from her uh, saying that she thoroughly enjoyed the uh, two travel bottles we sent her. So I, I uh, vote that's for very changing, exciting. I, I don't know if you can do this, but I vote for changing the name of the company from California Balsamic to Tommy Balsamic. <laughs> Tommy Balsamic would be a great name for it. I have to agree. But after um, 10 years of California Balsamic and 25 years of Trade Classique, well, third change is the charm. So you never know. But There's a question. We'll Who will ship to a post office box number? We can ship to a PO box number, but it cannot be a large order. We use boxes from the post office that are regional boxes, a small one, medium, and a large one. But we, uh, when it's more than four bottles, large bottles, we cannot use a PO box because five bottles or more um, means we have to use a FedEx ground and FedEx will not deliver to a PO box. Um, so it has to be four bottles or less of large bottles. It can be, you can call me um, to discuss about, um, about that. But a young lady today has a box going to a PO box in Illinois and she has three large bottles, not a problem. And her two little freebies, remember you're always gonna get two complimentary uh, flavors by putting Chef AJ in the order notes box at the bottom of the checkout page and then tell us what you want for your two freebies. We will do that every time. And let's see, this is the month of of July next month, starting on August 1st is our next special of the, of the year. So from August 1st, all the way until August 31st is our annual August special. And it's gonna be rocking busy as it is every year. So uh, look for it on the front page of our website on August 1st. It'll oh, be yeah, you can't give us a little teaser and tell us what it is right now. Huh? Well, we don't do that because this broadcast will, will occur um, you know, uh, will be on your uh, YouTube page for years. That's true. That so, makes sense. So that's why we don't talk about it except uh, when it's the actual month itself. Sure. So, but can you tell us what next month's flavor that you're going to recipes for? Oh, so next month. Yes, indeed. Uh, the ne next month's uh, flavor is our basil balsamic. And uh, that's a flavor that people have been enjoying for such a long time. So if you have a basil recipe that you'd like to share with us, send it to orders at californiabalsamic.com. And um, we would love to see some, some recipes using our basil balsamic. So uh, start thinking. And it's a little bit shorter, 
Chef, when's the uh, what's the date for the first Tuesday next month? Do you have a calendar? Wait, I know there was something going on. I asked you if you could be flexible. That would be August. Oh yeah, no, it was another. Uh, it looks like it's Tuesday, August third. So that's very soon after your stuff starts. Good. Yes, that's only yeah third day in that. So by all means, um, if you have a if you have a recipe for that, please send it off here in the next uh, week to ten days so we can practice making it. We generally uh, try to make each of the dishes twice in the in the time between each broadcast. So we want to practice it, you know, because sometimes you get it right the first time, sometimes we don't. Uh -huh. We like to get them, they get them right at least by the second time. Dale is suggesting that you get your picture on the bottle of Tommy Balsamic Vinegar the way that I Love Date Lady has her picture on the bottle. That's true. I did see that. Uh, is that Susan? Uh, her name is Colleen Sunley, but she says it's really Colleen. not her, but it just looked like her. Oh, funny. Uh, she actually spoke with her recently and she sent me a, a small sample of it because we still want to make uh, a date balsamic using either date crystals or the date syrup. And that's uh, something that we want to do. Um, so that's, we're going to, we're going to experiment with it. Um, you know, we can still ask for a sample of the cucumber balsamic that we're going to introduce in September uh, in the order notes box. Um, it's not available for sale yet, but it will be available for samples. So that's something to think about if you like the, if you like cucumbers, because all we use is pureed cucumbers in the, uh, in the balsamic. That there sounds you. amazing. Well, it's Lissa's so birthday, August 3rd, so she's looking forward to the show, uh, the basil, or is it basil, whichever you prefer. Take your pick. Yeah, we used uh, her date syrup in the, uh, in the granola. Uh, so well, thank you, Colleen, because it's a wonderful product. Yeah, it really is. Okay, well, this is fun. So thank you for showing us. Uh, Amy saying cucumber balsamic sounds great. I've tasted it. It's very refreshing. Wonderful. That, it's it's going to be a big hit because we've had many, many people give us some feedback, you know, asking, can you make it a little bit stronger or, you know, leave it the way it is. That's what we need. We need feedback because we're not doing but a handful of festivals. We're going to one little festival at the end of this month, the 23rd, 24th, I think, uh, in uh, Tri-Cities up in Washington. We'll be up there for a festival in Ammon Park uh, in Richland um, for two days, uh, Friday, Saturday only. And, uh, and then we'll do one festival in Pleasanton in August. Uh, Patrick will be at that one. And then uh, September will be at the Candy Dance uh, in Genoa, Nevada for an event in a little town of 300 people, more than likely 75,000 people will show up to that event at the end of September. It's uh, really amazing. And we're just so excited that we can finally start going back to do some festivals again. So that's exciting. Wow, the candy dance sounds like fun. It is, although it's funny that they made, they called it the candy dance because they sold candy as a fundraiser uh, for either to get electric lights in the streets or to help the, um, fire. the fire, the volunteer fire department. We're not sure which story is accurate, but the festival has been going on except for last year for a hundred years. The last two years ago was its 100th anniversary. So this year technically will be its 101st. Uh, anniversary for the candy dance. So if you live anywhere near the Reno area, it's about an hour south of Reno for the little tiny town of Genoa. Isn't that a town in Italy? It is, Genoa, yep. Or is so, it Genoa? Uh, Genoa, Genoa, yeah, you potato and potato. All right, <laughs> Dale says he so, wants that popsicle. Looks delicious. Well, I'm so, oh, glad, it's glad, I, so glad I sent you those bowls. <laughs> I knew that they would actually be used on the air. Absolutely, Chef. We love this mold. This is our third batch, the third time we've used it, and there'll be many more, many more to come. So well, all is good. If you need any more sticks, let me know because it was cheaper to buy five thousand than it was to buy fifty for some strange oh reason. So I've got a lot of sticks, so last me. All I, right. I'll move my popsicle sticks. There we are. Well, we'll just lick this one clean and reuse it again. Yeah. There, you know, saying instead of the sugar dance, we'll call it the Tommy Balsamic dance. All is well, Chef. And we actually, Ethel and I, a couple of years ago, they actually have a dance on uh, Saturday night. And we uh, we went to the dance and it was fabulous. What a fun time that is. If you're ever going to go to one tiny little town for a festival, the candy dance is the uh, one event if you're anywhere near Nevada. Uh, or it's just only a 20, 30 minute drive from South Lake Tahoe as well, if you're anywhere near there. Wow, great. Well, so, thank you. 
so much. I look forward to the basil recipes or the basil recipes on August 3rd at 2 p.m. Wonderful, Chef. Thanks for having us again. Of course, and thanks everyone for sending in the recipes and thank you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when my guest is no under the Dr. Jasmine Sardala and she is a PCRM doctor. All right, take care, balsamic people. Thank you, Chef, from the gang at California Balsamic.